Aaron Rodgers is the biggest dynasty loser for the New York Jets. Does he have any dynasty value left? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuke. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That is $150 if your bet wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Kate Majuk. You can follow her on Twitter at Kate Majuk. You can read her at Behind the Steel Curtain, Pro Football Focus, and Yahoo.com. On today's show, we are recapping the 2023 Jets season, which I'm sure Jets fans would like to soon forget. Uh, but we're going to be discussing the biggest losers, the biggest dynasty winners, and the player that you should be trying to acquire this offseason. Okay, we're going to start on the negative side of things with Aaron Rodgers, who has to be the biggest loser from this team. I mean, it's really tough, Marcus, because we're going to be talking about the Jets season in review. And there are two Jets seasons that the Jets had this year. And one was the season they actually had. And two was the season that they could have had if they mm. had a healthy Aaron Rodgers this year. But I think what we have to remember, Marcus, when we look at what could have been with Aaron Rodgers and the Jets offense had he not ruptured his Achilles literally on the first drive of the game. I mean, it it was a horror story. And that horror story, they didn't find any answers at quarterback whatsoever. But I think what we need to remember when we look at Aaron Rodgers and this you know, situation. There were already a lot of questions about Aaron Rodgers before he even took the field. Now, there was no question that he had one of the best wide receivers in the National Football League with Garrett Wilson. But like Marcus, you look at the fantasy production overall from Aaron Rodgers in recent years. Let's not forget 2022. He averaged just under 15 fantasy points per game was a quarterback 13. I mean, he had just a single game in the 2022 season where he threw for more than two touchdowns. There were already questions about Aaron Rodgers, and they had nothing to do with his age, nothing to do with his health. And now we're another year out. He's 40 years old, coming off of an Achilles injury. And Marcus, the dynasty value for Aaron Rodgers, the perceived dynasty value, I mean, it's absolutely plummeted. I'm going to give you the names of a few quarterbacks that are currently being drafted ahead of Aaron Rodgers in the most recent dynasty batch of ADP. And I, I'm going to start off with the, maybe the most egregious of them all. I don't even know if it's egregious is the right word, but Kenny Pickett. No, get out of here. That's not a starting quarterback. <laughs> it's not a starting quarterback. Uh, Daniel Jones, Geno Smith, Russell Wilson, Will Levis, those are the quarterbacks being drafted directly ahead of Aaron Rodgers at that point in time. So when we talk about losing value, I mean, no quarterback lost more value. Heading into the season, he was being drafted on average in dynasty startups based on ADP in the, right around the 14th round in a startup. Right now, he's being drafted 18th, 19th round in dynasty startups. So like, yeah, from a value standpoint, he's lost any and you know, all value. But I, I do have to question looking at all of this information. Are we overreacting? Because it still feels like when you're comparing the upside of an Aaron Rodgers to that of a Daniel Jones or a Kenny Pickett or a Geno Smith, he's got to have a little bit more upside than that, right? Even if you're getting a one year loaner from Aaron Rodgers for the 2024 season. I don't know, Kate. I want to go back to that graphic if you're watching with us on YouTube. Even in the you know the seasons where he was performing really well, he only once of the last five years finishes the top three quarterback. You know, 2021, his last MVP season, still finished outside of the top five in terms of uh, fantasy production. So, I, I I question what the upside is. 
Uh, I, I don't think this Achilles injury is going to help him as a runner at all. He already wasn't running. This is going to make him less mobile. And all of the questions I had about the Jets last year ended up being true. And I think they're going to be worse this year. Like the offensive line would, was a disaster in 2023 for the Jets. How is it going to get better? They have one draft pick that they could spend on an offensive lineman. Great. You still have an issue at right tackle. Your center is a problem. Your best offensive lineman, Elijah Vera Tucker, is coming off an injury. Who's the number two receiver on this team? They tried to convince us that it was Alan Lazard. They spent big money on Alan Lazard. That didn't work out. They signed Randall Cobb. That didn't work out. McCole Hardman was a big signing. He caught the game-winning touchdown for the Chiefs, not the, the Jets. This is one where I, I'm completely fine fading Aaron Rodgers as a fantasy and a dynasty quarterback because I I think at best you're getting somebody like that could finish around QB 13, QB 14. That's just not a, there's not a lot of value in that. I think that's very fair, Marcus. The the breakdown of the skill position player group. So like again, heading into 2024, here's a look at the wide receivers that are under contract. We have like you mentioned, Alan Lazard, who was their Junk. big, big signing, uh, got a $44 million deal. Whoops. Um, you have Garrett Wilson, obviously offensive rookie of the year, uh, just a year ago, had another solid season despite bad quarterback play, but okay. You have uh, Xavier Gibson, who you love the underdog story of, but um, no, uh, like what, what else do they have here in this group, Jason Brownlee, Lance, nothing, nothing. Kuchin, I don't, I don't even know who that is. Like, it, and I saw and they don't even have tight ends that can really do a solid job. I think supplementing that, that wide receiver to role of CJ Ozama and Tyler Conklin. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, what this, it's kind of funny because heading into 2023, Marcus, we're looking at this as like this top heavy loaded offense. Where? I saw some reports today that maybe they're interested in trading for Devontae Adams. And it's like, what assets do you have to go get Devontae Adams? Like you, you have no cap space. Adams has a huge contract and you don't have a second round pick. To, like it, it, it's, it's just insane to me. Um, <laughs> I just want to mention. This Jets team is like a mess. And I don't I think I fully uh, grasped just how messy this situation is for the Jets and obviously you you have the head coach on the hot seat as well I'm just not interested in Aaron Rodgers and, and maybe inevitably there is going to be let's say you're playing in a 12 team dynasty league there will be one dynasty manager that is a little bit more bullish on Aaron Rodgers and maybe you can trade his name value for Geno Smith I would do that all day you mentioned Will Levis, who was going about 50 spots ahead of Aaron Rodgers in your dynasty leagues. Like if you can able, if you're able to pull off that trade, you do that all day because could I, I could just see a very real situation where we get to like October 5th and Rodgers is hurt again. And this Jets team is in the same exact spot. He's 40 years old coming off a of torn Achilles. The history of quarterbacks coming up back from torn Achilles is pretty poor. Um, and the ones that did their careers, careers were over like in two years. I won't be surprised if the th same thing happens with Rogers. Some of the recent dynasty trades. I mean, the value is absolutely insane. Aaron Rodgers for a 2024 fourth round pick Aaron Rodgers and a second round pick to move up earlier into the second round. I mean, he's, he's the Spiller. throwaway at this point. And honestly, I think that is probably the way to approach it. If you are the Aaron Rodgers manager packaging him as a throwaway uh, where maybe you, you get to move up in, in, you know, your rookie drafts a little bit earlier, like package him as the throwaway, because I do think that, I mean, from a, a situational standpoint, I don't know that things are going to get really any better for Aaron Rodgers, even if he is on the field and healthy in 2024. All right. Enough being negative. Let's talk about some positives because there was one clear cut dynasty winner from this team this year. We will get to that player next. This episode is brought to you by DoorDash. What a football game that was on Sunday, but as usual, the commercials stole the show in my book. 
DoorDash went all out for game day and DoorDash stuff from all of the ads to one lucky winner. That's right. Cars, snacks, even tax software. I don't know how they pulled it off, but they did. I'm pretty bummed that I didn't win, but you got to hand it to them. It was one heck of a delivery. DoorDash is the all-in-one app for your everyday needs from restaurants to groceries to flowers and gifts. So next time you're running low on dinner ideas, pet supplies, or just time, you can get so much more than you realize delivered. Watch, you know, if you're going to have a, a bachelor party, my family loves to get together, watch The Bachelor. Stock up on all you need uh, with DoorDash and get it delivered with DoorDash right to your door. Football season might be over, but we're in the thick of basketball season, the school year, and let's face it, winter. I could think of a million reasons daily to order DoorDash. Hop in the app and make your day a little bit easier. Get dinner for tonight, groceries for the week, or a consolation prize for your sad friends in San Francisco. All on DoorDash. DoorDash, your door to more. Head to the DoorDash app to get everything you need delivered. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. We want to let you know that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel on YouTube. And now you can also find it on Amazon fire TV locked on sports. Today is here for you 24 seven covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of locked on plus our national shows covering every league. Find the locked on sports today channel now on Amazon fire TV. All right, Kate, let's talk about some positives from this jets team. Who is the biggest winner uh, from New York this year? I think the biggest winner and Marcus, it's hard for this guy to win anymore because he's already being drafted as the overall RB three in the latest batch of dynasty ADP, but it's gotta be jets running back Brees hall who mm -hmm. will remember it, it doesn't even feel like it, uh, but we've got, uh, you know, his first season coming off of that torn ACL had just under 300 touches in that return from an ACL seventh in the league just under 1600 scrimmage yards finishes the overall RB four, RB seven and fantasy points per game. He's got two years left on his rookie deal. And Marcus, I think seeing him be able to take on that workload coming back from the torn ACL, seeing him be as productive as he was, despite the fact that this was one of the worst offenses in the national football league. Huge winner for Brees Hall. And I mean, dynasty managers have to be pumped because they're seeing that return to form from that injury. It, it's huge. I'm going to have to double check the numbers, but I remember being in like Thanksgiving and Brees Hall had like two carries inside the 15 yard line to that point because the offense was so bad. It just limited his touchdown upside. And yet he was still incredibly productive. And not only did he come back from the injury, which is a huge deal, he didn't look like he lost a step at all. He also fought off Dalvin Cook. Remember when everybody was really excited about Dalvin Cook coming to the Jets? And by December, he was a healthy scratch and he got cut and nobody really even wanted him. And he had to sign with the Ravens practice squad. Like, Hey, I thought we were getting more positive here, Marcus. I am. This is positive. <laughs> this is me being positive. Brees Hall proved that he's that dude, right? And with this Jets team going into 2024, with Brees Hall going into year three of his rookie deal, there's just no sense of waiting to give him a full workload. And it seemed like as the year went on, the Jets became more and more confident that he could carry a big workload. I think he's going to get or have a monster 2024 season and a 2025 season. And, you know, we talk about it, it Dynasty League is how running back is really like a year to year position. There's very few players that I want more on my dynasty teams than Brees Hall this coming season. I, I you're right. I, I don't know how much more he, he could have gained in value, but I think he just cemented himself as a top four dynasty running back. It's not particularly close either. Absolutely. I mean, again, RB4 this season. And Marcus, you mentioned kind of the, the lack of scoring opportunities, right? It, the Jets offense had the second fewest red zone plays in the entire national football league dead last in terms of total goal line plays. You know why? Cause they weren't in the red zone very often. They weren't near the goal line. And we know that those are some of the most valuable touches for running backs or, you know, anybody, uh, any mm -hmm. fantasy asset. Those are 
those situations where you're going to be in a position to to score and and get those touchdowns well you know jets weren't in those situations to give him those valuable touches i have to imagine that um you know seeing this kind of performance under what i'd consider probably the worst circumstances i could have imagined for the new york jets this season huge winner and you know looking at his dynasty ranking like throw the the torn acl out the window it doesn't matter anymore uh but Brees hall it very very intriguing for dynasty and i mean if you're in a dynasty league you've got to be I, I think knocking on the door for Brees hall just a little mm -hmm. bit because i'll say the trade value i do think is kind of all over the place marcus well, like I just wanted to mention really quickly, going into September last year, into week one, his overall ADP was 18. Still really high, still a second round pick in your startup drafts, but he's gotten that all the way up to eight overall right now. So that's a pretty significant rise, and it's why we're calling him the biggest winner. To go up 10 spots and to jump back into the first round, it's a huge deal. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And you know, we've mentioned the the you know question marks that are surrounding the Jets offense right now. I think Brees Hall and a guy we're going to talk about next here as a, a trade target. They're the only two non question marks like that. That is what you've got to love about Brees Hall. They have that early draft capital for Brees Hall and, you know, they're going to, I think, continue to ride him uh, into the into the ether because I think. When he touches the ball, I mean, obviously the the breakaway speed is is bar none. He's going to give this team a, a lot of opportunities to improve their offense here in the coming season if they they continue to feed him another year out from injury. And we should, yeah, I was gonna say that we should mention he'll be two years removed from the injury next year. Usually, we see these players in year two really start to look like their former selves. I thought he already looked like himself last year. I got to imagine that he's going to look even better. I, I just want to mention one more thing for his dynasty value. He's like leapfrog Christian McCaffrey by almost a full round. And I find that fascinating because you look at the running backs right now on dynasty league football and their ADP Jameer Gibbs, B. John Robinson and Brees Hall are all being separated by one spot at ADP. Uh, Jameer Gibbs, 7.67 B. John, 7.83 Brees Hall, 8.83. For Dynasty managers, this is basically a pick em when it comes to those three running backs. So would it surprise you, Kate, if we're into May, ADP, and Brees Hall is back up to RB1? Because it wouldn't surprise me at all. No, and I mean, Brees Hall, like if we're going to you know, compare him to Jameer Gibbs, obviously Gibbs has another year left on his contract, uh, on his rookie deal in comparison to Hall. But, I mean, Brees Hall, 22 years old, Marcus. And – far less competition for touches yeah, i'm going to yeah. say than jameer gibbs at this point uh, in has i think every bit uh, the kind of opportunity to be efficient with his touches just based on the breakaway speed like if he gets to the second level he has the speed to hit the home run and we even saw that in year one returning from this injury i'm so excited for the value of Brees hall and dynasty and i you know i, I think the Sky's probably going to be the limit here in the next two seasons. All right, let's talk about a player that you should be trying to trade for this offseason from the New York Jets. We will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet at FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet, that is $150 bucks if your bet wins. Bet on all of your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlay, exclusive props, and more. Plus, go bet on who you think is going to play in the play-in game, who's going to make the playoffs, who's going to win the Western Conference, and who's going to win the NBA championship. All you have to do is visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and shoot your shot with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. On tomorrow's show, the great Matt Williamson is back to discuss how do you evaluate rookies in your dynasty league? 
Should you consider trading Trevor Lawrence for a top four pick in the 2024 draft? And which players do we dream of landing with the Atlanta Falcons or somewhere else in your dynasty leagues? Make sure you guys check that out on tomorrow's show of the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. But today, Kate, we're finishing up there talking about the one player, the Jets, that we want to acquire. And of course, it's Garrett Wilson. It's got to be Garrett Wilson, Marcus. And I was actually kind of torn. So for every team that we are reviewing this season, what we've been doing is doing, you know, one one dynasty loser, one winner, one trade target. And it was really hard to discern the difference between Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson here. But what I think we saw from Garrett Wilson paired with his current dynasty value, which valued a little bit lower than Brees Hall. Brees Hall, as you mentioned, you know, top three pick uh, now into the first round, back into the first round um, in, in overall ADP for dynasty. But Garrett Wilson isn't getting necessarily the same treatment. He's still a wide receiver one in dynasty, but still not, I, I think, as coveted as maybe he should be considering the kind of production that we saw from him in years one, in years two. I mean, Marcus, over the past two seasons, 178 receptions, over 2,100 yards, seven touchdowns. And Marcus, that was with a pretty rough looking cast of quarterbacks throwing to him. I mean, Zach Wilson, Trevor Simeon, Tim Boyle, Mike White, like Joe Flacco, who is elite. I'll give you that, but not with I the mean, Jets. That's, that's why he won't come back later the years because he was coming from the Jets. Yes. Yeah, like that, that is a terrible, terrible group of quarterbacks throwing to him. And I'm looking at Garrett Wilson and the potential upside. If they can find an answer to court to the quarterback position, obviously, regardless of the state of Aaron Rodgers, he's going to be a huge upgrade on any of those quarterbacks that yes. we just mentioned. I mean, how could you not be buying into Garrett Wilson, especially with the fact that he's being kind of treated as like a lower end wide receiver one in dynasty. And I think that, you know, the, the thousand receiving yard season, that's kind of his floor. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, of that list of quarterbacks, I'm going to throw it back up if you're watching this on YouTube. Actually, the best quarterback for Garrett Wilson was Mike White. Funny <laughs> enough, like because he could actually stand in the pocket and throw him the ball down the field. Uh, I agree with you. My, Garrett Wilson is somebody that I'm a trading for. But you know what's kind of crazy, Kate? He didn't lose any value this season despite not having Aaron Rodgers. In fact, his dynasty value only went up uh, starting in October. 13.5. 10.5, 9.5 in December, up to 7.3 uh, going into the month of January. So it's pretty crazy to see his dynasty value rise that much. I agree. He is a trade candidate for me, which tricky is how do you go about acquiring him? Because I would rather have Puka Nakua over Garrett Wilson. I just love Puka in that Rams offense. But like if you could trade Chris Olave plus something else to get Garrett, Garrett Wilson, I'm doing that. Or if you could trade, yeah. you know, maybe a late first round pick and oh, I'm trying to figure out another receiver, Jordan Addison to do that. I think that's something I'm interested in as well because I, I just won't be surprised if he finishes as the wide receiver one this year. He's got that type of upside. He's got that type of upside, Marcus. I think the way that you approach that, maybe pairing like one of these higher upside kind of wide receiver two types with some some sort of asset in order to acquire Garrett Wilson and that upside. So like, for instance, there's a there's an interesting range of wide receivers. You mentioned Chris Olave, who I think is kind of the top of this tier here. Consider names like Chris Olave, like a Jalen Waddle, like a Devonta Smith, a DJ Moore. That kind of tier of wide receiver for me is... A, a, I, I think a high value one, but one that like if you pair a, another asset with to upgrade to the upside of Garrett Wilson, I think you're going to walk away from a trade like that as a, a huge winner and taking advantage. I don't want to say like there's a wide receiver dead zone in Dynasty, but I do think that between, you know, Garrett Wilson, Puka Nakua, AJ Brown, Amonra St. Brown, like I do think there's a pretty significant tear break for me at that point. And I, I you know, I, I'd love to kind of take advantage of that tear break for fantasy, uh, especially. 
Yeah, I'm with you. I, I I think if after that tier, if you can trade one of those receivers, maybe it's Brandon Ayuk. Like I think Brandon Ayuk is somebody that I'm really interested in. Uh, coming off a much much better year than Garrett Wilson, but if I can flip Brandon Ayuk and maybe a second round pick for Garrett Wilson. I think I do that all day. There's going to be somebody in your league that's very bullish on Brandon Ayuk because of that offense, because of that talent, and because he's so young. But I'm willing to bet on the upside of I'm willing to bet on the upside of uh, Garrett Wilson here because I just think with even competent quarterback play, I'm talking to like you get like the 15th to 16th best quarterback in the league, he could be a 1600 yard receiver right away, right away. I mean, that would probably be the case if you got him a top 25 quarterback in the I league mean, market. Like, that's how how low I think we've been, um, or, or that's you know how low the Jets have been playing with these quarterbacks. They've absolutely got to find an answer that I think, I, I mean, Kenny Pickett would be an upgrade on some of the things they've been working with. So when I'm saying that, as the biggest Kenny Pickett skeptic in the world, you know that I mean it. And I, I do think if if we see Garrett Wilson get a quarterback with a pulse, we're going to see a big time ceiling. And, and we're going to see finally that prospect that he was drafted to be. He's 23 years old. He's got, we've seen him, I think, at his floor as a dynasty asset. And I want all of the Garrett Wilson shares that I could possibly acquire. All right. That is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked on Dynasty your first listen every single day. Go check out the channel on YouTube. We post videos every single day over there. Kate does a fantastic job with the shorts. Just check those out as well. Uh, go download the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We are free and available on all platforms. Follow Kate on Twitter at Kate Majuk. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier, and we will see you right back here tomorrow.